Thanks for having me. Very good to go. So, so the couple of, uh, just a precursor for when it, when it doesn't work. Um, I've got a couple of videos in here that I couldn't embed either, so um, I'm going to try and play them anyway and just see how it goes. If not, you'll just have to hear me drone on for a bit longer. So um, just to recap, um, I'm Libby McFadden from New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. And at NZTE, as we're better known in New Zealand, we help New Zealand businesses go global. And um, more and more, we're working with tech businesses because it's so growing in this country at the moment. This presentation is going to talk through how you can use your New Zealandness when you need to tell your own tech story to international buyers and investors. This is where it, this is where it gets a bit tricky, so I'll just see if I can make it play. Okay. This is the reality check though. Oh yeah, that's our um, internal thing. Can you see that? No. It's all right. Forget it then. It's all right. I was going to play your video, but it's not can, seeming to show. We can, can you play it? Yeah. Uh, we just need to move it over to a good touch screen. that screen. Oh, there you go. Oops. Great. Play. If it can play, can you get the play? There you go. New Zealand. Um. Interesting accents. Rugby? Something with a black. I want to say. I don't know what rugby is. The rugby, yes, the black. The All Blacks. Do uh, you remember the name? No, that's the name of the team, the All Blacks. When I think about New Zealand, I think of like zebras. Your national bird. Um, what would they be that? Uh, gonna go for the either an emu or an ostrich. Think the Loch Ness monster comes from New Zealand? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go in the lakes. <laughs> food? What food do you eat in New Zealand? I can only imagine anything sheep related. Sheep stew. Uh, I believe so. The New Zealand is famous for its pizza. Do you eat kiwis? <laughs> Yams? Uh, national dish. I would assume it's probably duck. Duck? That's what I, comes to mind. Most famous New Zealander. Um, Peter Jackson. Anybody else? Peter Jackson. Come, <laughs> come. <laughs> famous New Zealanders. Um, Besides Peter Jackson. Um, Lord is from New Zealand. That's a, a, that's that's a an artist. artist. Yeah. yeah, I do know Lord. <laughs> I had no idea she came from New Zealand. Oh, yes. Okay, Lord and Peter Jackson. I just don't like listening to the music because it's just so much. It's emotional. <laughs> do you want to go to New Zealand? Yes, yes, definitely. Of course. New Zealand is top of my list of places to go. Number one on my bucket list. Mine too. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. 100% sign Dream me up. Place. I'm not just saying that. We can't wait to go. Yep, that's right. I know that people are super sweet. A loving and peaceful country. One of the most incredibly beautiful places I've ever been, and I've been to a lot of places. Yeah, New Zealand's a cool place. All that stuff. Everything he said. <laughs> we love you, New Zealand. Live from New York, baby. you get it back to the thing? Yep. Great. So that's what we're dealing with when we actually want to go out there and tell our tech stories on the global stage. People don't even know where New Zealand is, let alone uh, know about our tech. These are the images that come to mind. Hobbits, rugby, sheep, lots of them. Not quite as many as we used to have, unfortunately. Um, and beautiful scenery. Not many people in that picture either. We're quite isolated. And that's what people think of us. And there's no problem with that, actually. That's what we've been telling people for the last 15 years. It's what's grown our amazing tourism industry. And it's why our economy is thriving. And it's wonderful. But it's not the whole story. There are gaps in this story. And we know what the story is because we're all in this room. We're creative. We're innovators. The real story of New Zealand innovators is this. We've got a legacy of great innovation in New Zealand. Game-changing innovation and a world firsts. We're the first country to give women the vote. That's not really innovation, but you know, hey, we'll take it. The first to uh, split the atom. The first to bring Hobbitville to life. I suppose that's something. And the first amphibious vehicle. Sea legs, might have, some of you might have heard of it. There's plenty of other firsts as well. 
So I guess what that means is what is our opportunity? So what we know is that there's very little awareness and recognition of the New Zealand tech sector internationally. But the reality is that the tech sector makes up a third of New Zealand's exports and it's our fastest growing sector. It's a huge opportunity for us to build our reputation in this space. When you think of New Zealand, we want people to think of us as a progressive nation of creative idea makers, not just clean and green, although that's great as well. So who are we talking to out there when we want to tell them about our amazing tech and innovation? Who is our audience? Um, our audience are international buyers, buyers of our products and services. They're global investors who are looking to invest in New Zealand tech and our startups and our industry. There are their industry medias and influencers. And we went out to them and we said, hey, what do you think about New Zealand tech? Um, and they gave us a few insights and it was quite, quite interesting. They said, um, we like Kiwis, they're really nice. They're, um, they're, they're great, but I mean, I don't think there's any real game-changing, cutting-edge solutions that come out of New Zealand. You're such a small country. Surely that impacts the quality of your tech. How can you, how can you come up with game-changing solutions? They said, you're a long way away. We've got locally-based suppliers in our own markets. Why do we need to come to you? We're a global business and we need partners who can deliver at scale. Can you truly deliver at scale for us? And of course, I've never heard of you, neither of my colleagues. How can I trust you're going to deliver? What they all said, though, is that they want solutions to global problems. The world is changing. We need to find better ways of doing things. An ever-growing population is putting more pressure on all of our resources. We're starting to see the effects of climate change. There's a need to do things differently, to innovate out of necessity rather than design. So the challenge, the challenge that we took up along with other government organisations, Callaghan, MB, New Zealand Story and, and the tech industry, was to tell a story that delivers to our audience needs while still remaining authentic and true to what makes us New Zealanders. What's true about us that makes us awesome at tech? Because we know it. What makes us such a small country that can punch above our weight? What is it about us that makes us different, unique, special? Challenges, game changers. There's only a few of us. New ideas from a new place. So if necessity is a mother of invention, it's no surprise that world-changing ideas are born in New Zealand. Our place at the edge of the world has bred a unique way of looking at challenges. We stretch ourselves. We go beyond to find ways of doing things. We end up leading the world. Isolation has driven us to become innovators. We've had to be creative, we've had to be practical. We didn't have anybody else who was going to be able to help us back in the day. And it means that we can take that number eight wire mentality. Everybody familiar with number eight wire mentality? Yeah, where you could just make something out of number eight wire in the back of your shed. Take that and then take it forward into a new connected world and change things. We're born global. We've always had to look beyond our shores for challenges. We're born global from day one. So in order to scale, any business has always had to think, well, I've got to go beyond New Zealand. And we think about that from the day we start our businesses. It's not a challenge we come up against later on. It's a challenge that we confront right at the beginning. We're also global in ways that you wouldn't even know. 90% of the world's silicon chips are produced with New Zealand technology. We have health respirators um, that, that help 10 million people across the world in 120 countries. And that's important because making the world a better place is part of who we are. It's part of our DNA. Ingenious solutions. When you want a job done differently, give it to people who think differently. New Zealand was one of the last land masses to be settled by humans. Just getting here in itself was a feat of ingenuity. That's who we are. 
Fast forward a thousand years and take that isolation and that spirit and nurture that and you get a country of people who think about things differently. Unconventional thinking plus leading edge science and technology means we're finding extraordinary answers to the world's toughest problems. We're also natural collaborators. Look at us here tonight. It's pretty exciting, a whole group of us. Being from a small country means we dream big and teaming up helps us to achieve the extraordinary. Being small is not an issue, actually. Being small means we are a country-sized accelerator for fresh technology and ideas where we inspire each other. New Zealand is an advanced economy, but being small means we can tap into the right expertise. It's not that far away from us. In fact, there's how many degrees of separation? Probably not that many. If, I'm sure somebody here could call up the Prime Minister if they wanted to. No, don't. Just so. <laughs> 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 um, and results matter more than hierarchy to us. You know, we have access to decision makers and we can make things happen. Innovation starts at the edge. We might be on the edge of the world, but this is where it starts. That puts us right in the right place right now. New Zealand sits at the edge of the world. That distance gives us the space to think, to create, to focus on what's important. We see old problems through fresh eyes. We take a bigger view and offer unexpected perspectives. We're willing to change the status quo, try new things, and we're slow to take no for an answer. There aren't many barriers. And of course, we're open, trusted, and stable. We're known for doing the right thing, even when nobody's looking. We're famous for taking an open and honest approach. We're one of the most stable economies in the world. We're also very business friendly when it comes to regulations. So when um, one entrepreneur decided that he could 3D print um, satellites for launch, um, our government put together a space agency uh, and regulations that made it possible. These are all messages that you can use when you need to tell your own stories. When you're out there and you need to talk about your tech and you want to weave in some stories, you need to weave in some messages that can help push you over the line. These are the things that you can say about coming from New Zealand. They're part of us and they're all of our stories. And if you don't believe me, this story might convince you. And this is where I'm going to try and play a video again. So we just go, I mean, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it works. Where's my trusty assistant? Thank you. <laughs> woo, woo. Let's hear it. Okay. Um, okay. What? No. Okay. Sorry. Go. Um, Just got a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wish. Um, might need a bit more sound than last time. Yep. Yeah, I'll make but sure. We'll of that. see. New Zealand has so many gifts to the world. If you talk to anybody who's been there, it's a magical place. I just love flying in and seeing how green the place is. It just takes me all the way back to my childhood. We're not just a country of beautiful mountains. We're so much more than that. Historically, we've just done things that other countries haven't done before. New Zealand is a, is a great place to, to make things, to initiate ideas. And to take those ideas and share them with the world drives a huge part of the New Zealand culture. We have ingenuity that allows us to be creative and bring it to the world with limited resources. and. We do that here in New Zealand all the time. We're launching rockets in New Zealand. How cool is that? Right now in the world, there's two companies delivering satellites to orbit. Elon Musk and SpaceX, and there's Rocket Lab. New Zealand is right in there. The capability they've created is paradigm breaking. And it's all happening out of Mahi in New Zealand. New Zealand brings together both technology and creativity, and that's why we're so good at innovating. You know, a lot of people, when you say creative, they think arts. But you can create in engineering. You create things where there was nothing, and, and that's an incredible thrill. And at Google, we love Kiwis, because Kiwis come up with ways to solve problems in ways that people from other other places wouldn't necessarily even attempt. Best in the world at producing eccentric inventors. <laughs> the whole America's Cup thing, you know. There was a guy up in Walkworth that had the idea of turning the centre boards into hydrofoils, and look at them now. We think outside the box and then just 
get on with it. And if we don't know how to do it, we figure it out. You're looking for people who are just going to make things happen. And New Zealand research on information retrieval was one of the core pieces that made Google successful. And New Zealanders solve huge global healthcare problems. We have some of the best doctors in the world, I should know. We do extraordinary things on the world stage around healthcare. We're arguably the cleverest country on the planet. We have very talented people who succeed in many technologies, whether it's marine, screen, software, we innovate. Technology is soaring there. Look at the movies they make. Warner Brothers invested in New Zealand because New Zealand's reputation is second to none. We're the best content on the planet. They do the best visual effects ever. The world has got a lot to learn from New Zealand in terms of the way that we invent technologies and look after each other as well. And that's what makes us different, I think. We have a collective responsibility to our land and to our future generations, which in Māori we call kaitiakitanga. We're on a mission to make better things in a better way and tread more lightly in the way that we make products, to be thoughtful about the environment. And, you know, when you think about the power that a small country can have in influencing the rest of the world, you know, I think New Zealand does sit there. We dare to dream. Everybody has belief that they can change the world, because we have and we will continue to do so. for having me. I look out to you, you're the future. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, we done. Thanks. <laughs>